Hi again, this is the food video and final video for atomic structure, which is the first section of module one for the AQA specification. And this video is going to be on electron arrangement. Okay, this is quite a hard topic to explain, but if you just bear with me, um, and we'll get there in the end. Also, a lot of this is covered in more depth in periodicity. Um, so, in that video you'll probably understand it more as well. Um, so there's a couple of labels we have to add to the periodic table to help us understand this. If we add helium over here. Right, and then this is the S block of the periodic table. This is the D block. And this is the P block. Right, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this is one, two, three. Okay, so we're going to come back to that later, but it might help us understand if we know that at the minute. Okay, so now we look at a bit of information about orbitals. Okay, orbitals is just a space that electrons fill. And one orbital can hold one, um, sorry, two electrons. So the S shell or block has one orbital. So it can have two electrons. The P shell or block has three orbitals. So it can hold six electrons. The D shell has five orbitals, so it can have ten electrons. Okay, and um, right, so if we go back to our periodic table, and um, this is the S shell. And there's the two electrons. This has one electron that has two electrons. Then we go over to 2s, two electrons, 2p, six electrons, 3s, two electrons, 3p, six electrons. So now we look at it in terms of shells. The first shell has um, one s block. Okay, so that means that it's got one S shell which can hold two electrons, so it has a total of two electrons that it can possibly hold. The second shell has a one S and it has a two S and it has a two P. So that means it can hold, so that's six, that's two, and that's two. It can hold ten electrons. So the third shell has a one S two a 2s2, a 2p6, and a um, 3s2, a 3p6, and a 3d10. So that holds 2, 2, 6, 2, 6, 10. So that's 10 plus, uh, uh, so that's 18 for that one. If we just add these numbers up there, and then plus them all, that equals 18. And the fourth shell is the same as the third shell, and it can hold 18 as well. So then we look at it on a graph. The 1s shell would look like this, and it would have two electrons. And the electrons represent are represented by arrows, and the arrows are obviously facing the opposite way. This is because they represent the electron spin, and the electron spin must be opposite opposite to um, counteract the electron's repulsion, because if you put two electrons in like this, then they would just repel each other straight away. Um, to counteract the electron repulsion. 
So then we go on to the next shell which is 2s and it has a 2p shell. So again, S shell holds two electrons, must be facing opposite, and the 2p shell has three orbitals and it can hold six electrons. But it gets different here because the electrons must fill um, all the orbitals before they start doubling up because obviously they don't want to be with another electron in simple form. Again, we'll go through that more in periodicity. And the pattern just carries on, then it would be 3s, it'd be 3p, and then 3d. And the 3d shall remember that there's going to be 5 orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, Okay, so now we look at examples of the SPD, and you need to write all of the SPDs up until um, KR. And that's just an example of how they look. So now if we look at one um, example of our own, let's say a hard one like nickel, we go, we know that um, it's 1s2, so 1s2, and then it's 2s2. 2p6, then 3s2, 3p6, and the shell, the fourth shell, fills before the um, 3d shell, so that's 4s2. And we'll come into why that is later on. Um, and then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons long, so it'll be 3d. Eight. Um, right, and also uh, what you can do is you can use a different method which is using the noble gas and you can just use that electrons configuration so that would take us to um, 3p6 and then you, it's just an easier way of writing it and they might give you a question like this in the exam and basically all you do is you put in brackets the noble gas of the row before so if we're doing nickel then um, obviously AR is the um, gas on the row before it. Okay, the next part is on ionization energies. And for this, you need to know a simple definition, and there is an equation. So the definition is um, the energy required to remove one electron from each atom in one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous one positive ions. And I always think the equation is better because you need to remember it and it helps explain it. So if we just represent an element by E, and it always has to be gaseous, delta H, and then we go to an E positive ion plus an electron, which is a minus. And this is for the first ionization energy. Um, ionization energy and the second one changes. You can be asked to write out both in the exam. And don't forget, in the exam, if they do give you the element, then replace um, the E for the element. For example, if it was oxygen, then this would just be O. And this has to be gas as well. So, otherwise you wouldn't get the mark. So, the second ionisation energy, just sticking with the E, would be an E positive, because that just comes from there. And then it would gain delta H. Then it goes to an E2 positive, because it's lost another electron, which is again minus. And remember gas, because you won't get the mark if you don't put that. Okay, now we look at the trends in the periodic table, and we need to know the trend across a period. It specifies period 3 in the specification. So, the ionisation energy would increase across a period, because it has an increasing number of protons. 
increasing number of protons protons um, it has the same amount of shielding you can see there's only one uh, subshell difference there so that stays the same and um, there's the same distance from the nucleus because these are in the same part of the shell so increased protons mean increased nuclear attraction and therefore the um, it's harder to pull the electrons away so there's an increased ionization energy because obviously this element here would have more protons than this element here so the ionization energy increases you will get asked questions about that in the exam okay the next one it specifies that you know the uh, trend in ionization down group 2 which is dead simple it decreases as there is more shielding from these subshells and um, so therefore there's um, a decreased nuclear attraction because it can't um, pull the, pro uh, the electrons in and also it's an increased um, distance from the nucleus therefore the um, nuclear attraction isn't as strong on the electrons um, there's a couple of buzzwords just to remember here when you're talking about across a period or down a period it's distance nuclear attraction everything links to nuclear attraction um, because it's the attraction of the nucleus the protons that keep the electrons from just um, flying off so that's really important uh, protons and shielding so if you link all of those bits in your answer then you'll get it right okay so that's the end of the video for this we've done all of these bits here and um, that's the final video for Atomic Structure 1. Okay, thanks for watching. Again, please do leave a comment or follow me on Twitter. It's at chem underscore AQA. Thank you. Bye.